Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about how to create pass maps in soccer. So a pass map is a way of visualizing passes that are made. You can visualize just completed passes. You can do different visualizations such as progressive passes, or you can look at kind of heat maps of where players are initiating their passes or receiving passes. It's a really cool concept and it's kind of like one of the most basic visualizations to make. So before we get started though, the thing that you're gonna need in to be able to do this, the data that you're gonna need is you're going to need something called event data, which is basically data that has the X and Y locations of all the action, basically all the passes. So you're gonna need a X and Y coordinate for where the pass started as well as an X and Y coordinate of where the pass ended. And this data is actually really hard to come by. It's, as you would imagine, it's not really free. Um, there's a couple ways to get this data. So number one is by, you can pay for it, going through something like yscout.com or if for some reason you have access to like stats bomb data um, you can get it from there. The other option is you can manually plot everything, and this is terrible. It's the worst. I do not recommend it. For this video, though, I have actually done it. <laughs> so the CSV I'm going to be using is all of Messi's passes in the second half of the game he played against, uh, that Barcelona played against uh, Real Betis. It was about like two weeks from this video. I don't remember the exact date, but anyways. The third option for getting the data is you can scrape the data from somewhere. So this is kind of iffy on the process of getting the data. It can be seen as illegal by a lot of people. Um, some people think it's okay just because it's data. And the companies, if they want to do better to protect their data, they can. But anyways, if you're going to scrape data, it's kind of a do-it-at-your-own-risk type of scenario where you can be banned, your IP can be banned from uh, that website, and so you won't be able to get more data. So if you do know how to scrape, you can look in that route. Um, I'm not going to teach that. Well, I'll teach scraping in a different video sometime down the road, but I'm not going to teach how to scrape football data because... Yeah, I don't want to get banned from accessing data and looking at data. So anyways, we're going to jump into the visualization tutorial right about now. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm coming out with a lot of cool content here in the future. So if you really want to up your Python skills, up your data analyst skills, whatever you want to up, it's going to be here. So thanks for stopping by. Let's jump into it. All right, everybody, so in the tutorial, we're going to just be using Jupyter Notebooks to create this and create the actual pass maps. First things first, you should download the data, which is going to be in the description, as well as if you wanna view this code as well. Um, it's all gonna be in my GitHub. I'll just make a separate repository for it. So you can just go and download it super easily and just run this on your own computer. One thing, that I do recommend as well is that you go back and you watch the video of how to create a pitch, a soccer pitch in Python. This is going to help you get and be able to um, create the pitch and because I'm not going to go over it in this video. But to start, we're going to need a couple of modules to create the pass map. And then in the next video, I'll explain how to add a heat map on top of that if that's something that you're interested in. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a couple of different modules um, that we need to import. So we're gonna import pandas for first. So we're gonna say import pandas as PD. And then as well, we, we need to use matplotlib pyplot. So we're gonna say import matplotlib matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then on top of that, we're going to be using to create the pitch, something I mentioned in the creating a pitch video, we're gonna use the MPL soccer pitch. So we're gonna say from MPL, oops, MPL 
soccer.pitch import pitch. So once again, go back and watch that video if you don't know what this is doing. And then something that we're gonna actually end up using later on to create the heat map is we're gonna use Seaborn, so we're gonna import Seaborn as S and S. So we'll just run that cell. Kinda of takes a second. Okay, and then the next thing we need to do is we need to read in the data. So we're just gonna do this by calling a data frame with pandas. We're gonna use pandas to read in the data frame. So we're just gonna say data frame equals, well, df. And then we're gonna say that equals pd.read csv. The file's a csv. Then you put it in single quotations is what I like to use here. And the file is called messy betis.csv. Then you run that cell, make sure it runs. You know if something runs without an error if it has numbers in the cell. If it didn't have a number in the cell, like say we misspelled the CSV, it'll come up like this big thing with the number. So if you don't get this big thing, then you know that it ran correctly. So make sure that your string or your file name is correct. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we actually with the data we're using, or with the pitch we're using, the data that we have is in a 100 by 100 axis. So that means 100 X axis, 100 Y axis. The pitch that we're actually using, it's 120 X and 80 Y. So we actually need to convert all the values. So if we look at the data frame, we can just look at it real quick. We have player, minute, second, X and Y. So X and Y, 50-50. That's the midfield, so that's a basically just a kickoff right here when he came on, he kicked the ball off. And then end X and end Y are also in that same thing. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to convert the data so it matches up with the stats bomb MPL soccer pitch. So how we do this is we're just gonna say DF X, so the column X up here, right here. And we're gonna do this for the X, Y, and X, and end Y. So you say DF X equals DF X, and then we're just gonna multiply that by 1.2, basically. So it's gonna multiply all the X values by 1.2 to line up with the 120, and then we're gonna say DF um, Y equals DF Y, DF Y, times 0.8, so that way it'll convert it from a 100 axis to an 80 axis. And then we just need to do the same thing for end x equals df end x times 1.2, and then the same thing for the data frame column of end y. So we'll just multiply the df and y times 0.8. And then we'll run that, make sure that it runs without any errors. So basically that's what our data frame is looking like. You can make sure that all of these actually worked if you just look at your data frame again by typing in df and you'll see that you actually have the numbers. For example, so now midfield is at 60-40 instead of 50-50. So it looks like it worked. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to actually begin to create the plot. So this is actually super simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a figure and then an AX and we're gonna say this equals plt.subplots and then inside of the subplots we need to create a fig size. So we'll say fig size equals and then in parentheses again we need to do 13.5 by eight. You don't need to use this, 13.5 by eight, but that's just usually how I like to view it on my actual computer. And then next, so you can run that if you're wanting to, and you can see, okay, this is what it looks like. It's just a figure right here. But what we're gonna do now is we're going to change the color from white to kind of a greenish color that I usually like to use. You don't have to do this but we're gonna set the face color. So we're gonna say fig.set underscore face color. 
And then in parentheses, we're gonna put a hex color code. So this is the one that I like to use. And so as you can see, it changes the outside of it. And then to change the inside, we're just gonna say ax.patch.set face color. So this is changing the inside and we're just gonna set it in parentheses to that same um, color. So now that's what it looks like. And that essentially is how we create the, like the base layer. So when you create visualizations, basically you're creating a base layer and then you're adding on top of that. So this is the base figure. And so now we're gonna add the soccer figure on top of that once again. Um, I explained how to do that in the previous video. If you don't remember, we'll just go to MPL soccer real quick. I'm not gonna go over what all this is doing, but basically you just come into MPL soccer documentation and then you can hit examples, um, plotting, pass plot using arrows. You can follow this example too if you want. I am just not going to. So we're actually going to copy all of that I don't really want to type it. And then we're going to get rid of this because we're, we've already created an axis. So this is our pitch. This is the pitch color. And then basically you just call it to draw, but we actually need to set the AX equal to our already created AX. So we'll plot it on top. So now this is what it should look like. So then after that, we actually, if you read the documentation for this stats bomb uh, pitch, it's going to tell you that the X axis is zero to 120, but the Y axis is actually inverted. So up here is zero and then down here is 80. What we wanna do is we wanna flip it. So we're gonna say plt.gca and then we're gonna say dot invert underscore Y axis in parentheses again. So then if we run that, you're not gonna see anything up here, but basically what's happening is it's inverting this. So now down here is zero and up here is 80. It just makes it easier than having to go change all of the um, plot points in our code. And so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plot each pass from our data frame in here. The easiest way I found to do this and the way that gives me more control over each pass is by using something called a for loop. So basically what a for loop does is it's just gonna go over each row. So it's gonna come up in the data frame and then we're gonna tell it to iterate over each row and it's going to plot the X and the Y and it's gonna create a line from the X and the Y to the end X and the end Y. And then we'll filter this with the successful and unsuccessful um, pass types so we can visualize which were successful, which were unsuccessful. So we'll go into that and we'll say 4x in, and then right here we're going to use something called range, and then we're going to say length of the data frame of x. So if you don't know what this is doing, um, I would recommend researching for loops in Python. I have a video on it, just kind of the basics. But basically this is just iter this is just setting it up so it's going to iterate over the entire data frame of values over the length of the column x essentially. And then we're going to use if statements. So we're going to say if data frame outcome so the column outcome and then on row x so x is right here it's going to basically say for data frame one, zero, one, two, three. But I'm not gonna really explain that as much. But if then we're gonna say if that is equal to successful. So on each row it's just gonna ask if it's successful or unsuccessful. Then we're gonna create this if statement where we're going to plot, sorry, plt.plot. And then in here we're gonna pass the x coordinates for the x and then the end x as well in the first parentheses. So I'll say df x x and then we're gonna say df end x x like that. So that's the first set of parentheses and we'll put a column and then we'll do the same thing for the y. 
So we'll say df y, oops, got to put it in parentheses in quotations, sorry, df y x, and then on the inside of this one, df, and then end y x. So for each row, and then basically, so that's these color. So this is the x values, these are the y values, and then we're just going to say the color equals something simple like green. So basically, you can run this now, and it should plot all these successful passes. So obviously, this isn't the final version, but as you can see, this is plotting all successful passes from their x coordinate to their y, um, from their x y location to their end x and y location. And then we'll just create this again. This is I'm not going to type it out. You can just copy this and change this to be unsuccessful. And then you can change the color to be red. So now it has all of his unsuccessful passes as well. And then this is kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on because you don't know where the beginning is. So what I recommend doing is just creating a scatter plot for each value. So we're just gonna throw in the X coordinates on each one. So I use the beginning and the end. So I use the beginning and the, so I use the beginning X and the beginning Y values. So we'll just go to DF, X, X. So it's basically just doing the same thing, but we're only gonna use the beginning values. So that's the X coordinate and then the Y coordinate and then we'll just say the color equals green so it matches. Oops, got to put it in a quotation so it's a string. And then we will copy this just so we're not having to type it again. And then we'll just change it to red as the color. So now you'll see we have these points of where he initiated the pass from. You can do a lot of different customization, which I'm not going to get into in this video right now just because I want to teach the basics and then um, in maybe other videos or if people are in the comments down below let me know if you want to see a more customization tutorial and I can create one of those as well but basically so what this is doing is just saying okay he started it from here he passed it to here it was unsuccessful on this one for example this was a corner kick where he just kicked it up here and it was probably just one of those short passes they do. So that is a simple plot. Obviously, if you want to add a title, you can just say plt.title and then in um, parentheses, sorry, in the parentheses with quotations, you just say messy pass map versus Real Betis. And then make sure you change the color because it's default is black. So we'll just say color equals white. And then it's going to be pretty small, so we'll actually change the size as well to be 20. And there you go. So that is a basic pass map using Python. Um, once again, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. In the next video that I'm making, we're actually going to be diving into how to create a heat map um, and make it look a little bit better. So thanks for watching, guys. Once again, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, follow me on Twitter where I create a lot of these graphs and I'm always talking about the soccer community as well as coding and yeah, thanks. See you in the next video.